last days, it's been suggested and it said, could it be that this state of absence of illusion, so-called, could be a state where we know and experience the difference between the real and the unreal, or that which is permanent and unchanging, and that which is ever changing. There's an old, old story that so far has not been understood, but perhaps with this recognition <coughs> and claiming of that recognition, its meaning might be apparent to us. It's the story about that great king who gathered around him all of the pundits and priests and learned beings and sages and the many persuasions. But for the most part, he'd discarded the majority of them as just being religionists. But there were two that remained, and he had to make a decision which of them would be his prime advisors in the court. And they were the Confucianists, the traditionists, those who followed the laws and rules. And then the Taoists, who seemed to have no beliefs at all, but he perceived that they had a secret. And he would often hear them talking amongst themselves about the Taoist way, the meeting of heaven and earth. So he devised a plan a plan to test them so that he could make the choice. So in his palace, he had a, an empty chamber. So he had set up down the middle of the room a curtain. And he called both the Confucianists and the Taoists to him and asked them to do something in the chamber, asking them what it was that they needed to complete what their inspirations were. And the Confucianists asked that they be given pots of paint of every different color and brushes. And the Taoists said, just a goodly quantity of Cheng, which was the rice wine, and a lot of soft cloths. So they were put on either side of the curtain. And sometimes the king would go into that chamber and he would inspect what was going. He could see the Confucianist very busy at work, measuring the wall and painting with all the different colors and brushes, very, very busy. And then he'd go to the Taoist side and he'd see some of them sitting in the corner just yarning away and maybe several of them with their cloths polishing the wall. So after the designated time that they were given, the king came down to inspect what had been done. And when he went into the side, of the Confucianists, he saw the most amazing sight because there was a magnificent mural and there he was depicted, the king himself on his most beautiful stallion in his armor, his helmet, and there around him were members of his 
concubines wearing silks and satins. There was his garden with its pond and the stream that ran through it. It was a magnificent and detailed piece of work. He was most impressed and he thought to himself, well, surely this is it. This is, these are the ones who I should have as my chief advisor. They have not left out one detail. And so they went, he went over to the Taoist side of Jacob. He looked and all he saw was a shiny blank wall. And he was shocked. He said, what are you trying to, why are you trying to fool me? Are you trying to hoodwink me? What is the meaning of this? Well, the Taoist says they usually were a little bit tipsy. And uh, <laughs> the head Taoist amongst them said, a monarch, uh, your majesty, pull aside the curtain. So the curtain was drawn. An amazing thing happened. The blank wall came alive. They reflected in it, but now not static without. There was movement. There was the tufts on the king's helmet blowing in the wind, the fish swimming in the pond, the silk dresses of the women flowing around them. And the king looked and he said to the Taoist, Is this your secret? And the Taoist nodded. And then there's a little anecdote, another Taoist anecdote about the emperor of Mu. And uh, he had followed the way of the Tao. And it came to a time where he felt to himself that his kingdom was in order. It was prosperous, the people were well taken care of, the grain silos were full. He felt that there was nothing more for him to do. But he wanted confirmation of this. So he went to his advisors and asked them, but they couldn't tell him because they were attached, of course, to him being there and someone to look up to and all of those kind of things. He went to the ordinary people and he asked them, but they too could not answer him or give him confirmation. So he was quite perplexed. But then it happened that one day when he was out abroad in disguise, he came across a group of children and he could hear them kind of singing. And they were saying, you have fed and clothed us, your laws are our laws. Without our knowing, we follow the way of heaven. And suddenly, the emperor knew. He went back to his palace and he called his successor to him. He abdicated his throne and left the palace. When the great sage, Wen Su, heard of this, he said, Ah, the emperor of Mu knows. So, leaving this incomplete, the question is asked, what 
did the king of mm, know? In other words, what is it that we know? Now, knowing that we know the difference between the permanent and the impermanent, the real and the unreal, the question can be asked, what is it that we know? of heaven and earth. Out of this, where they meet, what do we know? Resting in the place where the real and the unreal, the permanent and the impermanent, come together. What is it we know?